Chapter 8, Truth. A few nights later, you're moping in bed, absently munching on some stale popcorn as you continue to worry about Cass. I know she said she'd call me when she's ready, but that was days ago. For the millionth time, you rub her charm between your fingers, soothed by the gentle thud against your skin. I can still feel her heartbeat. <sighs> At least I know she's alright. But it's her ongoing radio silence that's got you really worried. What if she decided to cut me out of her life for good? What if she skipped town? You turn over and hear a crunch as your hip rolls through the stray popcorn kernel strewn across the sheets. Oh, this is getting disgusting, but I can't just make myself care right now. Your footsteps in the hall and belatedly realize that your mom's on her way to your room. Oh god, not again. There's a town enough knock at the door. Parker! Mom, leave me alone. You've been in that room for days. I'm starting to worry. Have you even showered? What does it matter? Just go away. Mark, I'll give you one more day of sulking about whatever it is you're sulking about. And then I'm coming in. Fine. Fine. The frustrated growl, you toss the bag of popcorn to the floor, sending kernels flying every direction. What's the point of showering when I feel this miserable? Suddenly you jump up at the unexpected sound of a pebble pinging against your window pane. Your heart lurches and you just know. Cass? You throw open the window and step back as Cass sleeps inside. A few awkward moments you stare at each other and finally Cass clears her throat. Uh, hey. Hey. That's all you have to say? Where have you been? I was working through some things. You mad? I'm more like worried. Worried about what? Oh, about you? I don't know. Worried that you had gotten hurt, that you left town, that you never wanted to see me again? You take your pick. I texted you the other night, got a message not received, auto reply. What was that about? She gives you an awkward shrug and looks away while pulling something out of her pocket. Oh, that. I was pretty far out in the woods and kind of broke my phone. Turns out chucking it with vampire strength will do that. If she's telling the truth. Why would you do that? I... Turns her hand through her hair and begins to pace, her expression troubled. Look, if I'm being honest, I wasn't just working through some stuff. I was trying to stay away from you. Stomach drops as one of your worst fears is confirmed. I knew you didn't want to be around me. She brushes a finger to your lips, cutting off your words. Let me finish. I was trying to. I thought it'd be better for both of us, but it turns out I can't stay away. No matter what I do, I keep circling back to you, new girl. Her fingers slide off your lips and a shiver runs through you as she, she holds your gaze. So, since running isn't an option, I guess we're gonna have to do this the hard way and hash things out. I'm listening. Not here. It'll be easier if I show you. There's this place I go to sometimes. I've never brought anyone there before, but I want to take you. Okay, let me get dressed. But before you can scramble for clothes, Cass catches your arm her eyes narrowed as she sweeps you from head to toe. And she leans close and sniffs. <laughs> Look, don't take this the wrong way, but you sure you want to go out like that? Like what? Really? You glance in the mirror and die a little. Your hair is a complete mess of stains on your shirt, and when you take a discreet whiff of your pits, Oh my god, this is your fault. This is what happens when I spend three days worrying whether you're dead or alive. Hey, your hygiene choices are your own. I think the whole uh, look's got this uh, je ne sais quoi about it. Mm, you do not get to act like you're paid attention in French class now out of all times. Just give me a minute. You dig through your laundry, pulling indiscriminate items from of clothing from the clean pile and rush to the bathroom, slamming the door behind you. That is the room fills with steam for the shower. You start to wonder. Wait a minute. Is this like a, a date? I can't lie. I, I like the thought of it. And I probably should step up my wardrobe game. Just in case. There is this new dress I've gotten the chance to wear. 
Same me! Feel like yourself again. Like a see-through thing where you just see flowers? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. After the shower, you wrap yourself in a towel and hesitate a moment. Come on, Parker, now's not the time to get shy. Then walk into the room to find Cass leaning against your desk, idly fiddling with some pencils. That was fast. I. Oh, hi. Her eyes sweep you from head to toe, lingering on the edge of your towel where it rests against your thigh. She lets out a long little wolf whistle. Not to cramp your style, but I don't know if this is the best outfit for a walk in the woods. Might get a little cold. Despite her joking tone, the intensity in your eyes and heat creeping up your cheeks, right to the tips of your ears to your chagrin, you stumble over your words. I, um, need to get changed. Well, don't let me stop you. Cass crosses her arms and settles back against the desk. There's a challenge in her grin, and you feel a horde of butterflies take flight in your stomach. Turn around, Cass, and no peeking. All right, all right. But for the record, modesty is for humans. She flashes you a smirk and turns as you rifle through your drawers, looking for the cute date outfit. Here it is. After a quick check to make sure Cass isn't looking, you toss the towel on your bed and start pulling on your clothes, nerves mixing with excitement that Cass is standing only a couple of feet away. Okay, you can look now. She praises you, a slow smile spreading across her face as she takes in your new look. Cute. Reminds me of before times, back when you were still uh, all soft and fragile like. Did you... Did you like me better than... I like you any way you are. And I especially like you in that outfit. So, where are you taking me? You'll see. It's not exactly around the corner, so we better get moving. After following Cass out of the window and through an unfamiliar part of Crimson Beach, you arrive at an overgrown house at the edge of the woods. Uh, whose house is this? Nobody's anymore. It's Vasquez's house, damn it. She stares up at an empty window, her body rigid, a shadow of pain in her eyes. Cass, why'd you bring me here? You wanted to know more about me. Well, welcome to my home, sweet home. Home, sweet home. Is this where you grew up? Sure is. My childhood home. Well, house, anyway. Home's kind of a loose concept in my experience. Step towards the house, but notice Cass doesn't follow. Instead, she continues to stare up at the windows, her jaw clenched. Hey... Are you okay? Of course I... She cuts herself off and takes a deep breath, her expression tightening. This place brings back a lot of memories. I thought if I brought you here, maybe it'd be easier to explain, but... Here Bobbley turns on her heel. This was a mistake. Let's go. Wait. Step in front of her, and when she lifts her chin to meet your eyes, the pain you see is really a physical thing. Yes, it's okay. No, it's not. I... I don't know what to do. Damn it, what's wrong with me? I want to show you. I, I want you to know, but... Her anxiety is infectious. You feel it threaten and take root in you. Your hands begin to shake. I can't let this get to me. I have to stay calm for her. And you feel it. Now, familiar tug inside that always precedes the awakening of some new ability. A mist blurs at the edge of your vision, but instead of power, this time it's a soothing wave of tranquility hovering just at the edge of your senses. If I let this in, I'll be able to calm myself down and maybe cast too. Time and choice. Soothe me using the unlock ability. Okay. New ability unlocked. Close your eyes and allow the calm to flow into you. Your breathing slows, your heartbeat decelerates. All the anxiety of the moment before drains away, and now, instead of fear, you feel clarity. You open your eyes and it's like your perception is open. Instead of being a source of tension, the world around you has become brighter, somehow. Maybe things aren't as bad as they seem. I think we all wish we had this ability. You feel... <laughs> A buzz in your hands, the space around them ripples like light refracting above pavement on a blistering hot day. And you know, 
If I touch her, I can transform this column to cast. I'll pull her clothes. You take her into your arms, rubbing her back in a slow circle, visualizing the energy flowing in her and soothing her tension. It's all right, Cass. It's going to be okay. After a moment, she buries her face in your neck, sighs, and you feel her rigid body relaxing against you. Parker. Let's breathe. Her chest expands as she takes a deep breath, her skittering heartbeat easing into a steady rhythm. She pulls back with a smile. Better? Well, I don't hate this whole being calm thing, but the million dollar question is, does it work if I touch you too? I think you should try. She slides her hands slowly around your waist, rests it lightly above the base of your spine, making you shiver. How's that? I think it's having the opposite in fact, effect. In fact, uh, we should probably just go in the house now. Mmm, spoil sport. Inside the house is just as run down. You can't help but notice the holes in the wall that definitely match the dimensions of Cass's fist. I've been back here a few times, mostly when I was uh, have serious stuff to deal with. Wow. I like your decor. Right? I was going for the deconstructed look. Mission accomplished. You point off the next landing. What's upstairs? My old bedroom. Again, you see a deeper sense of hurt. Heart aching, you wrap your arms around her from behind, resting your cheek against her back. Hey, just breathe, okay? And when you're ready, we can go up. She nails deeply once and then again, her hand sliding up to cover yours like she's drawing wordless comfort from your touch, and finally she nods. Let's go. Love the place. Vasquez would be sad. You ascend the creaking stairs and Cass leads you to a door. She turns the knob, but her hand trembles and she hesitates. You put her hand on your shoulder, tap the energy inside of you, and you send the tendrils of calm flowing into her. Her hand stops trembling. Thanks. I'm starting to really appreciate that calming thing. She pushes into a small bedroom from where torn curtains hang over the cracked window and the sagging mattress lies askew on an old twin bed. A shabby lamp sits atop a small desk, its cracked leg held together with duct tape. Did little Cass do her homework here? She huffs a rueful laugh and shrugs. My sister must scream. Okay. Interesting posters on the wall. Little Cass didn't do a lot of homework. Your eyes draw into a bookcase with various items propped on its shelves. So I think School's Out is the other poster. Tell me about the comic books, trophy, postcard. Comic books. Mm, smiling, she picks up one of the comics and flips through it fondly. Used to collect them. I wanted to be a superhero. No, it's Lights Out. Okay. In a weird way, now that you're a vamp, you kind of are. <laughs> Never looked at it like that. She wanders around the room, then sits tentatively on the bed, running her fingers over the old mattress you settled beside her. You okay? Yeah, I just never really told anybody about this stuff before. You told me some. You were in foster care, you moved around a lot, you didn't have a lot of friends. Yeah, that, but I didn't really tell you how it affected me. Well, you can tell me now. You sure you want to hear this? It's not really an uplifting, inspirational kind of story. Well, tell me, Cass. I want to know everything about you. There's a spark of light in her eyes, and you wonder if anyone has ever said that to her before. I don't really remember too much about my real family. For most of my life, it was just me and that old book I told you about. The book that was uh, your only connection to your parents. The one your so-called friends stole. And then there was my foster parents. Well, not much of a parent. More like a caretaker minus the care. You see the shadows of remembered pain in her eyes. You slide your arm around her back. Hey, if this is too much, you don't have to tell me. She pulls you closer, tipping her head against yours clearly taking comfort in your touch. Thanks, but I I think I need to get this out. I bounced around a lot from place to place. 
Made it kind of hard to have friends, and that makes you an easy target. I'm sure people like Denise. I was scared all the time. For getting made fun of, pushed around when you're powerless, you learn that fighting back just makes it worse. I hated it. Hated myself, too. So I survived the only way I could by living below the radar. By hiding. That must have been so lonely. I'm not looking for sympathy, new girl. Just trying to explain. You don't need to explain anything to me. I get it. She's also not giving you sympathy. She's trying to make you understand she understands. No, you don't. I was desperate to erase the part of me that was weak and scared. The kind of desperate you only know if you've spent your whole life getting bullied. So when George and Claire told me about vampires, I begged to be turned. And if I was a vampire, nobody was ever going to push me around again. And I was right. The day I turned was the first time in my life I felt strong, powerful. From then on, it's been Cass Harlow first, no matter what. Until now. You cop her cheek and turn her to face you. Cass. She just brushes her hand away, pushing angrily to her feet. Damn it, new girl, you ruined it. Uh, what? You ruined it. You ruined everything by making me want to put someone else first. By making me care about you. She runs her hands through her hair in frustration, like there's more she has to say, but just can't find the words. I can't be the kind of person. The kind of person you deserve. I just don't know how. Every instinct tells you to take her pain away with a soothing wave of calm. You start to reach for her. No. She needs to feel these emotions. It's the only way she'll heal. So that's why I stayed away, and it's killing me. Because I can't change. I won't change, but... I can't let you go, either. Because I just... Snarls, looking around frantically before fixing on something. A mallet. Oh, that explains the holes. Cash grabs the mallet and slams it into the wall with a guttural scream. Cass, stop. Rolls back to take another swing. Grab the mallet out of her hand. With vampire speed and strength, you grab the mallet. And for a moment, you struggle with her for control. Cass, let it go. No. She's like a child. It's okay, just let it go. You feel her grip loosen incrementally, and finally you're able to pull it gently away from her fingers and toss it away. Her eyes lock on your face, and the moment turns charged, some kind of expectation hovering in the air between you. Thank you. Then you clasp her face in your hands and pull her in for furious, bruising kiss. Parker. She pulls you flush towards her hands, wander freely across her shoulders, down her back to the curved hollow at the base of her spine. She pulls away, her gaze flits across your face, letting her eyes ask a question she can't seem to put into words. Parker. Her hands brush over your face, a thumb lingering over your lips, her fingertips shaking slightly as she holds you tenderly. But the look in her eyes burns hot, a fire she would let loose if you'd let her. She wants more than this. She wants to go further. She wants me. All of me. Really? Really? I want you to. Grab the collar of Cass's jacket, wrench her close, her hands lie down your sides as your bodies come together in a heated flush. Her lips move hard against yours as your hands wander from her shoulders to the small of her back and lower. Rabby. The kiss is powerful, lighting a fire in your belly, and you have no choice but to let it burn. You clasp her face in your hands, pulling away so you can look in her eyes. You know I can't help myself. Slowly. You draw her back in and brush her lips against her. You're soft, warm, and the kiss deepens as her lips part and she twines her tongue around yours. 
Your desperation for each other flares, and she lets out a moan and digs her nails into your back. Ah. Uh, and before you realize the kiss turns heated again, your hands drilling fire across each other's bodies, leaving you feeling deliciously out of control. Damn, new girl, can't get enough of me? What tipped you off? Don't know, maybe it's your wandering hands? My hands? How about your hands? She smirks and runs her fingers down your back to the base of your spine. You mean these hands? She locks eyes with you and gives your clothes a tug, her question unspoken, but obvious your stomach flips in anticipation. You nod and peel away the layers of your clothes, piece by piece, and her fangs pepper each inch of your skin, she reveals with small, teasing nibs. Ah. You jolt at each press of her fangs, but instead of pulling away, you cup the nape of her neck and hold her clothes. More? voice is deep, throaty, with a heightened vampire hearing, you recognize the depths of desire in her tone. I want you to bite me here. You tip your head to the side and run your fingers down your neck. She smirks her silver eyes, lighting up and whispers her lips over the spot. Couldn't have picked better myself. She nips again and you feel a jolt of pain just before she runs her tongue across the spot, soothing you. God, you're addicting. She steps back, her hungry gaze sweeping across your body, igniting a blaze in you. With vampire speed, you start tugging at her jacket. Can't resist me, huh? Love that energy. There's more where that came from. With shaking hands, you tear away the rest of her clothes, desperate to remove all the layers that stand between you and she laughs. Slow down. Mm, I can't. What these off you now? When her clothes are pooled on the floor, you pause to take it in every inch of her, and your eyes wander back to her face, wreathed now in smug grin. Mere approval? Hmm, I guess. Interesting. Are those, I'm assuming the brands. One on the wrist, one on the shoulder. Actually, there's one on the other shoulder, too. Not trusting yourself to speak, you nod and pull her to you, but she turns the tables, backing you into the desk. Oh. The lamp teeters and crashes to the ground, and you with pause, panning to stare at the shards scattered across the floorboards. Um, sorry? Who cares? Always hated that lamp, anyway. And with a wild grin, she sweeps an arm across the surface, sending everything else tumbling to the floor in a raucous crash. You laugh and dig your fingers into her back, pulling her against you as your nails rake up her spine. She hisses in delight. Damn, babe, you've got claws. Taking your waist, she lifts you onto the desk and steps between your thighs. Instinctively, you wrap your legs around her. You press against her, feeling the marks you've leaving against her back, and she arches into your touch in a wordless plea for more. Kiss me again. Like this? She presses her lips to yours, her breath warm, sweet as her tongue caresses and swirls, a shiver arcs down your spine, and you moan. Sounds like a yes. Definitely a yes. You kiss up her jaw across her jaw. Or blah, blah, blah. Kiss up her neck and across her jaw to her mouth for another kiss that makes your head spin. You slam your hand into the wall for balance, your fingers gouging deep furs as they rip away the wallpaper. You're doing more damage than I did. Who cares, right? Now you're getting it. Her lips crush yours like she's lost all control of herself and your mouth opens to her desperately. More. Your body is burned from the inside out, and you know you have to have her. As if reading your thoughts, she breathes heavily against your lips. Where? Where do you want to go? Hmm, let's go to the bed. She lifts you up, your legs locking behind her. She carries you to the bed, laying you down and settling over you. Her eyes lock with yours, and you shiver at the intensity of everything the two of you are sharing. You whisper her name. Cassie. Her fingers slide roughly across your stomach and settle between your thighs. She takes another nip of your throat and your body thrums in anticipation. Touch me back, new girl. A husky growl sends a shiver down your spine and you reach for raking your nails down the, her side to the juncture between her legs. Ruh row It's very short and sweet. What else is new? But we still have to be careful because YouTube! Later, you lie together on the bed panting, cast draped across you like a lazy cat. You trace slow circles against your skin as you look around. Tufts of fabric lie elsewhere. Everywhere. 
feathers from slash pillows still floating in the air. We really tore the place apart, those poor pillows. <laughs> yes, kisses softly at your fingertips, skim over the healing moths on her back. Mmm, and each other. Yes. Heat rises to your cheeks and you bite your lip at her raised eyebrow. Not saying I mind about my back or the room. Definitely my favorite way to break things. Better than the mallet. Way better and way more satisfying. You brush a strand of sweat-soaked hair from her forehead and plant a kiss in its place. Yes, I... Really care for you. You know that, right? She pins you with a smirk, her shoulder rising in a careless shrug. Of course you do. And then the smirk fades and she grows quieter. But you know, same. She flops on her back, her fingers still reaching out to touch you. I'd like to see Golden Boy show you that's fun a time. And just like that, your excitement fades as all your confusion and angst return. If Cass knew about what happened with Gabriel, or Gabriel knew what just happened now, what would I even tell them? I think we should... We have a choice between go and leave Gabriel out of this. Mm. Mm. When you bring up the side piece and or relationship... <laughs> Why? Don't want to hurt his sensitive yet stoic feelings? <sighs> it's just, he has nothing to do with it. Let's just stick to us, okay? No argument here, and yet you brought him up. She runs a finger down your cheek, but your eyes stray to the window, and you suddenly realize how late it is. Oh my god, I need to go. Your eyes swiftly and slip into your clothes. Cass follows suit, and there's a definite sense that the mood has changed. You turn towards the door. Hey, hold up. Let me walk you. It's easy to get lost around here. No, I know the way. There's a flash of hurt in her eyes, but she nods. But when, she t when you turn to leave, she catches your arm. Hey, new girl. I'm not good with words. Not the sincere kind, anyway. But I want you to know that, well, this was... It's okay, Cass. It was for me, too. She visibly relaxes, and you pull her to you for one last kiss, and slip down the stairs, trailing doubt and disquiet in your wake. Leave the house, headed out into the woods, craving the peace of solitary walk through the trees to process your roiling emotions. I need to be alone, someplace quiet where I can think all this through and just clear my head. I'll go to that wharf Gabriel brought me to, the lake Cass brought me to. Ah, oh, God! Damn it. how about you just go home, because it's late. There should be a third option here. The book is really trying to divide us. You change direction, and soon find the path down to the quiet dock. Walking out to the edge, you feel your feet beat a melancholy rhythm on the boards. Close your eyes, remember how peaceful the afternoon with Gabriel was, trying to channel that emotion. I wish you were here, Gabriel. I could use your calm right now. How did every relationship in my life get so complicated? Mom and I are at each other's throats. Gabriel and I, what happened between us was so perfect, but it was just a perfect with being with Cass as well. What does this mean for all three of us? Probably the first person, the only person Cass has ever opened up to. I don't want to lose her by choosing Gabriel over her. It's all just such a mess. No, it's not. You're a child. Frustration exploding inside you, you grab a rock and fling it over the water, watching it skip across the surface before sinking. Ugh. Your vampire nature responds to your emotions. You fling the rock after rock, finally grabbing a fist-sized stone with a strangled scream. Uh, so now we're out in the woods screaming. Got it. You launch it. <laughs> you launch it across the water. It slams into a tree with a terrifying crack, severing it at the base and sending it toppling into the water. Oh my. Yep, you gave yourself away. Jump at the intake of breath, spinning around to find Lennox. Too late. 
You realize your fangs are on full display, and from the terror on his face, you know he sees your luminous silver eyes as well. You... you're... A... Oh my god, I have to get the hell out of here. No, 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 we need to silence. He smells of fear and blood. The frantic thump of his heart kindles your predatory instincts. You lunge for him. That's not what I meant by silence him! Fingers clamping around his neck, you wrench Lennox towards you, twisting his head to the side, curling back your lips to tear out his throat. Please stop! Oh my god, what am I doing? With a Herculean force of will, you push him away and run! You race home at full speed, smashing so hard through the front door that the hinges pull away from the frame. Parker! Oh, now even your mom knows you're a vampire, too! Yeah, no, this is going downhill real quick. Mom? Your mom's at the sink, one hand holding a soapy knife, the other pressed to her chest in surprise. You almost gave me a heart attack! Are you- Oh my god, the door! What's wrong with you? Nothing. I'm just- And where the hell have you been? You look like you just ran through a hedge. I thought you were in your room. Are you okay? I'm fine, Mom. I, I had to go out. I had something to do. So you left without telling me, Parker. Breaking down the door was one thing, but breaking the very few rules I have for this house, that I can't ignore. I was your age once. I've tried to be understanding, but you continue to defy me, coming home late and now sneaking out and... Yes, I snuck out, but... <sighs> Cass needed me. Oh, so Cass is leading you in trouble again. She didn't lead me into trouble. She needed my help. She was upset. Damn it, Parker! She turns back to the sink, finishing washing the knife. Scrubbing it angrily, she continues to scold you. You've gone too far this time. Honestly, I'm starting to regret ever moving here. If I thought you'd get into this much trouble in a small town like Crimson... Ouch! Oh, no. In her haste, she slices her finger on the edge of the knife, sending bright red blood running down her hand. No, no. We're in trouble now, folks. Immediately, you're fixated at the side of it. The sand, the night of bloodless, suddenly devastating hunger burns your throat. No. Can you get me the first aid kit? It should be in the... She gestures towards the cabinet and her eyes land on you. Parker, your eyes, your teeth. What did you... You barely hear what she's saying. The instinct to spring is so intense. You swipe your tongue across the razor tips of your fangs and salivate. So easy. It's the little taste. Without even realizing it, you have a halting step towards her. Her eyes widening in tear. Parker? It's the fear in her voice that brings you back to your senses. With a gasp, you squeeze your eyes closed and turn away. Your willpower kept you from attacking your mom. What am I thinking? Parker! A body slams into you. It's Gabriel, and the next thing you know, he's caging you against the walls. Your mother crumbles, sobbing to the floor. You snap back to reality, and the horror of what you've just done, what you almost did, quenches your bloodlust. Mom, oh my god. Parker, what? What? Gabriel, I don't, I don't understand. She's okay, Dr. Reese. You're both okay. Parker just needs to calm down. The sight of your mom cowering away from you on the kitchen floor breaks something inside of you. I have to hold on to Gabriel, hug mom. Well, let's hope she doesn't, you know, like cut you with a knife or something. I don't know. You struggle to break free from Gabriel, desperate to comfort your mom. Mom, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean it. I'm... Parker, I can't let you go yet. It's not safe. His arms come around you and you dig your fingers into his shoulders, clinging to him like a raft in a stormy sea. I'm here, it's okay. Your mom's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Oh, Christ, and it just keeps getting worse, this chapter! Oh, it's far from okay. The sound of that voice, colder than you've ever heard it, makes your stomach drop. You turn to find a story in Lewin standing in your kitchen. Dr. Junius, Principal Yao, how did you... Story of Lewin, please. Let me explain. Enough. You've created quite a mess, Parker. Exposing yourself to a human. And this time, the consequences are going to be severe. Well, 
All right, well, without further ado, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And now, description, plenty of things to check out there, ways to support and whatnot. Also, the, the join and thanks features on YouTube. Let me know what you all thought. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there and just say, holy moly, dude. We went from one thing to the another, to the another, to the another, and we're just all over the place. Um, yeah, no, listen. Girl needs some, I don't know. Um, yeah. Silence him was not what I was going for in terms of, hey, let's rip his throat out. <laughs> Um, secondly, uh, I wonder if Historian Lewin knew about that. So I guess we'll find out in the next chapter. Also, the whole, you know, your mom thing and everything else. And, yeah, no, you coming home like that and nearly, you know, tearing the door off the hinges and everything else. Like that. Again, I just feel like it's everything so quick, so fast, right? Um, I don't know. Let me know if you guys what your feelings are let me know i've never gone through something like that i know there's teenage angst right i never got to experience that i kind of had to grow up real quick to be an adult so yeah i mean the worst i ever did with teenage angst was like ride a bicycle 100 plus miles a week and it wasn't teenage angst it was just angst in general um and that was it just you know riding in one day 100 miles and you know, I did that, and I was like, wow, okay, and that burns a lot of, you know, energy and whatnot, and you get in really good shape because of it. So, that was the worst I've ever done, and, you know, again, it wasn't what just happened here, so just, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch y'all later. Peace out.